Joining us now, I'm pleased to say, Bonson Group founder, David Bonson. David, what are you seeing when it comes to what the markets are pricing in for the November election? I still think markets are going to have a hard time pricing in a total outcome in July and August because it is months away and we know how tight of a country it is politically. The polls are clear right now that there's an advantage to former President Trump, but the Electoral College and just the ways in which this stuff is broken in close elections, both in 2020 and 16, markets can't fully price it. The bigger factor, though, Taylor, and I've written about this to clients a lot, is the Senate and the House. That even if we knew today with a crystal ball it will be President Trump or it will be President Biden, if we don't know the outcome in the Senate and the House, that becomes complicated in what it means to the energy sector, hmm. the technology sector, tax and spending, et cetera. David, there's one Wall Street uh, strategist that's warning that the uh, stocks could see a 30 percent fall as we slip into recession and jobs are harder to find. You've also got Nick Timoros in The Wall Street Journal basically saying that because we've seen a slow decline in the labor market doesn't necessarily mean that we're out of the woods yet. So do you have a recession in the cards? No, I do not. And then it's extremely unlikely that there'd be a recession in the cards. There are analysts that like to predict about 12 out of every one recession. Um, and saying something like the market could drop 30 percent is a rather unhelpful thing to say to the extent that it's always true. Markets can drop a great deal. Markets don't drop that much, as you know, Jackie, unless earnings drop substantially. Earnings are hanging in there, but the valuation of markets is very expensive. It's 1999 levels in a lot of this big cap tech stuff that's been holding up the markets. So I wouldn't be overly sanguine or overly Pollyannish about the market continuing with this tear. But the idea of an imminent 30 percent drop, I think, is is mostly clickbait. Really, the problem on the economy is longer term that we have excessive government indebtedness that's putting downward pressure on growth. Quarter by quarter, though, it's sort of muddling through. Some people are doing well and other people are not doing well. David, last week we covered the story of tractor supply getting rid of their DEI priorities. Um, that was supposed to make us rich, DEI. Diversity was supposed to make uh, companies more profitable. It goes back to a McKinsey study back from 2015. But a new study has come out and said there actually is not uh, that relationship between diversity and corporate profits. Yeah, those people never believed that diversity was supposed to make us rich. They were lying. They believed that it was some part of a social justice endeavor. The, the more sinister of them had an explicit commitment to cultural Marxism, to critical theory. Some of them were just sort of useful idiots. And I don't mean to be harsh about this, but this DEI stuff, Sean, as you know, has done significant damage, damage to people uh, finding jobs, damage to people keeping jobs, damage to company morale, activity. And so it's good that this stuff is being debunked and it's good that companies are going the other way. But there's more room uh, to move still. We have work to do to get back to an aspirational society that is celebrating people's capability and not these other categories. Well, we're grateful that you come on and share some of your thoughts with us, David. Thank you so much. Thanks so much.